Who's the woman with the white hair in the mirror? The white hair. Oh sh <laughs> Stop it! Oh my god, I got so freaked out. I was like, who are you talking about? There's no one here. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and if you are new here, hi, my name is Charlotte Gogallen. I am a Scottish blogger and contributor for BBC The Social. You can find the links to that channel down below and today if you're a returning guest or a friend, hi, how are you? I hope you're having a really great day because I'm having a really great day today. I have a very special guest here with me on my channel and if you're native to Scotland, you should know who this person is. I think this person's pretty known everywhere so... I'm not going to say anything else, I'm just going to introduce my guest and I'm going to look back at this camera now so that I can do that. So please help me in welcoming Mr Ford Kiernan. Hi Ford! Hi, so if I look at that camera or this one? I mean you can look at either, if you look at this one, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, well I'm, I, I don't know about knowing all over the world, um, but... Uh, well, you know what? Start. You. I will tell you very quickly before we get into this that when I was in Indiana, I went there to visit family a couple of years ago, my cousin's neighbour who lives down the hill came up to my, my aunt's house, put on the TV, and all I could hear was the still game intro. And I was like, why am I here? I'm What? So I went into the living room and there was this kid just sat watching the show. And I'm honest to God, it was the only way he could understand me was because he had grown up with the show. So I was so surprised. I was like, wow, you actually know what this show is? He was like, oh yeah, it's my, it's my favorite show in the whole world, it's great. And he was like quoting it and he, his accent was amazing. Um, and he was like, yeah, my mom doesn't let me watch it at my house, so I have to come here to watch it. Very good American accent you've picked up at the same time, very good. Well, you know, if, if you're casting for a show and you have an American character, you know. <laughs> Look no further. <laughs> uh, so how am I finding you today? How are you? Hey, uh, yeah, I'm having a great day. Um, I slept in this morning um, for the first time in two days. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling to get out of my bed in the morning. It's really difficult to get up at um, what used to be known as a, a reasonable hour, like, you know, eight o'clock or something. That is a difficult target for me these days. I'm sometimes up at three o'clock in the morning to start a four o'clock shift. But that's just because I'm still working during this um, lockdown. So I see other people not working or they're getting furloughed. So they're getting paid more than me and they're just staying at home watching Netflix. And I'm just at work at three o'clock in the morning. Like, I wish I was being furloughed. I wish I didn't have to go out and work, but I am grateful for it at the same time. That, of course, coupled with the fact that you're uh, creeping about in the middle of the night, like some sort of night crawler. I mean, kind of when I go to work, especially if I'm walking over, um, I know that people are driving by in their cars and they're like looking at me like, why is she out wandering in the streets at this time of night? But, um, but then I'm like, why are you walking, like wandering the streets at this time of night? Where are you going at three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> you know? But speaking of Netflix, I actually want to know, have you been enjoying any shows lately while you've been in uh, lockdown, either the first time or the second time, like right now? Yeah, that would have been a, that would have been a good question if you'd asked me at the the beginning of the pandemic because I have absolutely eaten everything that the um, cable channels have got to offer. I've watched every bloody box set. I'm demented. I've, I've, really? All content, I've, all, all content, like every every night of the week, fishing about for something. You know, I've, I've, I've re-watched stuff that I wouldn't buy. I've just found a like, six feet under. I don't know if you, you know you're too young, but <laughs> that was the kind of beginning of all that. I know. That was the kind of beginning of all that edgy sort of American TV and, and uh, I looked at a couple of episodes and it looks really old fashioned now and I remember that looking quite cool. Yeah. But I, uh, no, I've, wa I've watched every box set, everyone. Have you watched uh, Bridgerton? I know that that was a big show during um, the pandemic. I actually haven't watched it yet. I haven't seen it. No, nah, well, I mean, I've only, I've, I've, I've not done it all in, but I've, I've seen some of it. I've seen some of it. Uh, you can see. You can see the appeal in it. I mean, apart from anything else, it's fabulous looking. I would, I would love to get a bit in that. Of course, when you when you get a, a good part in one of those kind of a global hits, that's the door open for getting all sorts of other wee bits of work that you would never be exposed to. Um, it's worked wonders for all the actors that are in it. It's a good thing. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of my friends have watched it. My my whole family watched it, except my sisters, um, and they're raving about it and they think it's great. I've just been, I have this problem with shows, like, I just re-watch them. Like, if I really like a series, I'll just re-watch it, and I won't look at anything that's new. Uh, and I think that's something I have to I have to change because I miss out on a lot of conversations and people will talk about it on social media and I can't really interact because I don't know what they're talking about. So I'm like, no. I don't know. Uh, but I, I did watch uh, WandaVision on Disney Plus, which wrapped yesterday. I think the last episode was yesterday or the day before, but I really liked that. I thought that that was a, a brilliant show. I, I, I wanted to like that a lot because the, the trailer looked really good and, and then, so what I signed up for 50 quid for the Disney channel, because it's them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, I watched I, w I watched the first episode and I thought, oh no. And then the second episode, and then I made my mind up, I wasn't going back. Yeah. Because I realised I'd just paid 50 quid for a, uh, you know, for, for, for a, a TV programme and I don't like the other Marvel stuff, so, well, that's uh, you know, thing. unless... I I hadn't watched much of the Marvel stuff. Like, I wasn't a huge Marvel fan. I'd seen a few of the Iron Man movies, but with WandaVision, my boyfriend, my Cameron, he helped me kind of follow the show as it went along. But because I love shows like I Love Lucy and the Dick Van Dyke show, that was what appealed to me. I thought the whole show was going to be a black and white sitcom. And then by episode yeah. two, it went to colour. And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, no, no, but it looked amazing. Mm -hmm, it did. It looked really good. What's the poster behind you? The poster behind me is a Romeo and Juliet poster. Let me just show. A lot of people know my sister is an artist, and that's it there. What's um, the um? What's the story there with that? Then is that a movie? As it's the Franco Zeffirelli version of Romeo and Juliet with. Olivia Hussey and Leonard Whiting and actually Olivia Hussey who's in this picture liked the photograph that I posted on social media so that gave that that gave my sister validation that this was a good print because the person that's in the print loved the photograph oh that's great that's great so that's not that's not the the, the merchandise for the actual movie this is an interpretation that she's done of that yeah, so it was a it was a screen cap from a shot of the film yeah. that I just thought was really pretty, and I thought when I get my own house, you know, this will look beautiful in any room. So when I showed yeah. her the picture at first, she was like, "Oh, it's it's quite risky. They're not they're not wearing any clothes." I was like, "Well, they're not exposed. Like even if they were nude, I don't care. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful picture." Show me again. I missed that. <laughs> okay. Show oh. me again. I immediately want to see it again. All right, let's have a look. There you go. <laughs> ah, it's not risky. Nah. You could put that above a fireplace or anything. Right? So I don't, I unfortunately, I could draw a fireplace. I could get her to draw one right here. Yeah, you need to get her to draw. Can, can you draw? <laughs> <laughs> no, are you joking? I can do stick people. I'm a really good stick person. Person. I actually have a few questions for you if you fancy answering them. So we've kind of covered mm. we kind of covered what shows you've you've been liking recently. And you said Six Feet Under, mm. which I will add to my watch list. I will watch mm. that if you think it's great. Um, mm. So these are kind of just <laughs> these are kind of just junket questions. Just kind of you know I want to I want to interview you, interview you anyway. Um, so again, I don't know if I said this before. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, but thank you right. so much for uh, being here today and uh, doing this with me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> right. Okay, so my first question for you is, uh, what day would you gladly relive? Gladly relive? Well, I, I, I think, <laughs> you know, a lot of people will like that, but uh, I, I, I come out of school a bit earlier mm -hmm. um, than I should have done, uh, just a few weeks before I was 16, and uh, I had a job to go to. And uh, I felt immediately growing up, it was the oddest thing, shaking off the shackle of the school. Not that I didn't like school, I did, but, uh, well, bits of it. But it was an enormous feeling of, right, I'm on my own. I need to get on with the rest of what I'm doing. And it, but, but having the job to go to. So I'd like you to relive that feeling again, because I think it's probably like beer or something. You, you never get the, 
the feeling that you had the first time when you try it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would want to go back. Oh, I suppose there's many, but uh, that was the one that sprang, sprang to mind. I remember, but in, you know, I remember the weather being good and everything. But all the elements collided to make me feel a million dollars that day. Would you give any advice to anyone that's leaving high school and venturing off into the into the world for the first time? Would you give any advice to those people? Say in high school and secondary school terms? Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, it doesn't matter what they're going to do, but just, you know, what advice would you give them about leaving high school? Well, I suppose it, I, I suppose at the minute, um, you know, what with the last couple of years and things, it, it, it's to try and remain studying because there's not a great deal happening right at this particular juncture. So anybody that can get college, uni, or uh, I mean, apprenticeships are all work because there aren't, there aren't any, but you know, I mean, a, a toe in the door of uh, still learning and picking up skills at this period is a good idea. For me, when I was coming out of school, um, it was uh, 1978. Mm -hmm. um, they were getting into Thatcher territory and the world was different then. Uh -huh. Obviously, everybody's world's different. And there seemed to be a thing about get out, get working, get making money because, every, you know, the, the economy was kind of strapped. Getting towards the situation we're in just now. So in retrospect, I should have really stuck in and, um, you know, went to engineering college or whatever. So, well, I mean, you went on to, you know, creating one of the most iconic and most quotable television shows in Scotland. So I think that that's still something that's, you know, you can be super, super proud of, you know. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's a, it, it's a, a mental path of just what I, what, of things that I've done to get to that point. But um, I often wonder what would have happened if the world had been slightly different, you know, if the world hadn't been in a crisis and jobs, better jobs were on offer or opportunities that there just wasn't a great deal going on there. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I sort of see that just now a wee bit, but I don't think that younger people coming out of the school should be terribly worried about how things are going to turn out because history tells us these depths and things and problems have all been here before and we get out of them. You know what I mean? It seems terrible when we're in the middle of this, but and kids and uh, Young people, even people in their twenties, must be a bit despondent, but they shouldn't be. There's, there's still stacks and stacks of things to do. The world's getting better, not worse. I think that's a great way to end that that question. I think that's a really nice quote that a lot of people can take comfort from. I'm taking comfort from that, and I'm kind of know what I'm heading off to do, but I still think that's nice. Okay. Uh, okay. So here's my next question for you. So when are you most yourself? Um. Well, certainly, when, when I'm with my family, I suppose, is, is the nearest thing to yourself as you're going to be, mm -hmm. unless you're a complete head case, <laughs> and you're putting on <laughs> some sort of fun for your family, that would be, that would be hard work. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that, I guess, my family and the, uh, but the true self, the greedy swine, the guy that's getting in on my own, because <laughs> my ass. My ass is just hanging out the fridge the whole time. Things I shouldn't be doing, eating garbage and not having any rules. So I really need to be myself with others so that I don't get in a mess. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I guess you should ask first, uh, do you like peanut butter? Is that something you're, you like? Well, oddly, I've never liked peanut butter. It's always, the idea of it makes me want to retch. Oh, okay. <laughs> but in the last few weeks, and I'm only talking six weeks, yes, mm -hmm. I'm now big on peanut butter. Wait, do you have it? Pe peanut butter, peanut butter crunchy. Hey, there you go. Butter smooth. Hundred <laughs> percent peanut butter smooth. <laughs> I mean, I used to. You see, somebody told me years ago there was a program called. Mr. Ed, the amazing do talking horse. It's an old black and white program. Have I heard of it? And I remember reading somewhere, in order to get the effect of the horse talking, he used to ram peanut butter up its gums, right? Mm-hmm. And then go, action, 
and the host would go in. And then they would just like I say, well, I'm just minding my own business and blah, blah, blah. And that was what they used and that's always made me sick. But in the last few weeks, something, no, my daughter put me on it a few weeks ago and I'm, I, I love it. Well, here's I've more had it, I've had it with cheese and everything. You have it with cheese? Yeah, I have it on, uh, <laughs> I have it on crackers with a pile of cheese and a lump of peanut butter on <laughs> It's good. No, no, that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> it looks as if, it looks as if I'm going to end up dying the Elvis way because there was peanut butter involved in Elvis's death. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> he had, he had a peanut butter jam, mashed banana on two slices of bread, deep fried. That was his favourite sandwich. Do you have like the autopsy report like on your table right now? <laughs> like, are you starting your survivor? <laughs> That's right. Elvis, Aaron, Presley. Okay. And I wanted to know which one you prefer. Do you prefer crunchy or smooth? That was, that was the end of that question. Well, well, let's just have a little look inside the jars. Oh, that's smooth. a good way to touch it. Oh, smooth hasn't been opened. Oh. Okay. No. Crunchy. Oh. <laughs> Yay, he's a crunchy fan like me. I like it crunchy. That's the only way to have it, in my opinion. This next one's a little bit, a little bit of a deep question. So, deep. yeah, a little bit deep. Uh, how would you like to be remembered after you've left a room? Probably by a pungent fart that landed lasted about eight minutes. Where, where everybody, everybody else is getting the blame of it. <laughs> uh, that's that's different. I really didn't expect you to say something. What was it? What was the question again? It was how would you like to be remembered after you've left a room? Well, Greg and I used to talk about a kind of analogy that we had that. Uh, you know, life at some points is like a party. If you took a look at your whole life, it's like a party. The beginning of your life is when you come into a room and everybody's saying, hello, how are you? Oh, good to see you. I'm John, this is Margaret, this is blah, blah, blah. And you're at the party. And uh, when you get to the middle of your life, you're, you're still in the party, but your music's not just as good. And you're looking around and you don't know half the people and you know, and, and, and it's not as good as it used to be at the beginning. And then at the end of your life, you're at the party and you turn around and you say cheerio and nobody in the room knows you oh. because you've been around that long and you just go and close the door. That's the way I like to think of it. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, what sweetie are you most grateful for? It's the fries chocolate cream. Oh no. They're awful. I don't like those. <laughs> well, the reason for that is that um, I found out at one point that they're vegan. And I'm not a vegan. So, but, but I still get a, I get a wee buzz from eating a fried chocolate cream as if I'm helping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I can't think what mine would be. I think I like Moam's pinballs. They're like the... The, the wee solid sweeties that have like sherbet in the middle. Oh, aye, aye, aye. Those are my, I could go through about three bags of those because they're just, I don't know how to describe it. But I don't, I don't feel full when I've eaten them. That's the problem. So I just, I just <laughs> buy three bags. Is this like a, is this like a helpline now? I just don't feel full when I've eaten them. But that just shows how good they are. That's, I mean, if you tried them, have you ever tried them? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because I'll, I'll eat any sweets. Yeah, I like rhubarb and custard sweets. Have you had them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my nana used to get like big jars of them up the cash and carry. So well, well, fair enough. You you must have had peanut butter and cheese um, <laughs> hard boiled sweets. Did you never try them? Like same company. <laughs> same company. <laughs> rhubarb and custard, <laughs> peanut butter and cheese. All the weirdos love those sweets. I think I must have bypassed that one because I, I don't think I'm that weird. <laughs> oh, this one's fun. Okay, so Ford, if your life was a song, which one would it be? Is that all there is? And you wouldn't know that song. I don't actually. You should look it up. It's somebody ill contented with not having had a better laugh. Is that Peggy Lee? Yeah. 
Yes. Hey, Lee, right, okay. I've got it here. But it's, it, it's a sort of, um, she's, it's a moony song. She's moaning, is that all there is? Is that all there is? <laughs> she seemed to, she was kind of bemoaning that she hadn't done better. Right? It just seemed to be a bit the ultimate, it's not the ultimate song, but um, no, you see, what, what sums you up? <laughs> That'll do. Who is your biggest influence? Uh, you mean in, for the job I've done? For your job, but also just in life, like in life. Um, you my want biggest to influence. That. I think probably my mother had been the biggest influence in my life completely. Oh. Uh, that made that sounds a bit like the Bates Motel, <laughs> but uh, we hope you've not no, cut people be... up in the shower for it. I'd hope that you haven't. Sliced no, up people. No, no, I've purposely always avoided those curtains that go like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, my, uh, she was a strong person and uh, she'd had it pretty tough, but she, she just my and she had a like, fantastic sense of humour and um, there was a lot of laughing. A lot of tough times too, but a lot of laughing. And uh, so I, definitely the biggest influence on me. I also had a terrific uncle called Uncle Barney. My uncle was like, a dad kind of figure, and he was great. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, older people really, and um, people that have managed to get through their entire life and still be a good person at the end, and, and you know what I mean? And that, is, I don't know, that's what you should aspire to, you know, really, I suppose. Oh, that's such a wholesome answer. Oh. I know. Oh. And well, so now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna uh, uh, yeah, it's so, it's so wholesome. It's like, it's quite like this peanut butter. This is wholesome, and it comes in two different types. <laughs> but, so what, who's you, which, back, right back at you, who is it for you? Well, obviously my mum and dad are a unit, so I would say the both of them. They mm. have their, they both have their strengths, they're, they both have different things that have helped shape me and my sisters into who we've become. And mm -hmm. uh, my influence for acting, because I, I do that, you know, obviously not right now because we've been in lockdown and everything like that, but I always mm. wanted to do that. Um, was and is still uh, Brendan Fraser. And I know people that know me are gonna watch this and go, oh God, she can't go one day without mentioning the guy. But here's the thing. I grew up watching his movies. I really, really love him. Like I met him at a convention two years ago and it was, I got so much more than I had bargained for because he was just so kind and his quote is to have courage. And that's a quote I heard from him maybe five years ago. And when I started going to college, um, I didn't have the easiest time when I was there towards the end. But at the start, it was that one quote he said, have courage, just, you know, and anything that you do, just, just have that mantra, just constantly going over and over in your head and you'll get through whatever you have to get through and that has really stuck with me so my parents plus brendan makes me <laughs> who i am <laughs> no 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 honestly that's all good darling positivity is a key that, that's as good of advice as any you know courage i mean you're, you know having the having the nerve just to go that extra wee bit just to see if you can get what you you need out of it you know i right, good good for you yeah and my mom and dad have always said don't say no to things like unless it's gonna be dangerous but you know if opportunities come by just say yes and just try it and if it fails at least you'll know that you tried because if you don't try something then you might think oh I wonder what would have happened if I had just said yes I wonder what would have you know would my life be how it is now had I not taken that and I'm sure you felt that throughout your career like if you hadn't had come up with an idea or if you'd it's honestly as simple as leaving the house like an hour later than you were supposed to. Everything changes with how you live your day. Mm. Yeah, and, and and if I don't get out of bed uh, at eight o'clock in the morning, half those opportunities are gone. <laughs> but um, no, that, that that's right. You've got you, you've got to try and have a, you've got to try and have a go at everything. I, I sometimes uh, wonder if I should have tried music years ago and mm. what would have happened there. Um, I didn't, and I only really found music later on in my life, um, much later on. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been on the garage band and Logic Pro since this whole process started, and it's moved me on leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. So it's just having that nerve to go, 
right, I'm just going to push through and try it. Just going to give it a because go. as you get as you get older, you definitely get more reluctant to try try different things, and you no, know, it's important to go for everything. Have the balls, have the courage. Oh, this is a good one. Sorry, I'm seeing these as I'm scrolling down. I forget I I added these questions, but uh, do you like your name, and would you ever change it? I, I did when, when I was younger. I didn't like it. Uh, no. It, well, I didn't hate it, but it was pretty obvious uh, I was going to get abused for it. I don't know what my mother was thinking. Um, because it's not abbreviated for anything. It's not Clifford or Crawford or anything. Right, because I wondered, I was like, I wonder if Ford is short for something that's... No, so I think... It's not, it's just Ford. I and I think the kids, other kids, they, would take, they wouldn't, wouldn't take the mickey because it would just be Ford Escort or Ford this or can he afford that, or can, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't painful to deal with. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and sometimes it helps having a wee, uh, that, that wee edge that you've got to defend yourself for. And I don't know, I never ever, I, I, it never really worried me, but I, I often wondered, and I've asked my mother a thousand times when she was living, why did you do that? And she can't come up with a reasonable answer. They just liked it. Well, I think it's a nice name. I actually think your name's, you know, a nice name. Well, the second one's about a mouthful. Well, Kiernan, I mean, I'm Gilgallan. I'm Gilgallan. I mean, how many Gilgallans do you know? Well, I mean, I only know um, the Gilgallans that live next door. And of course, the Gilgallans that have got the shop, the go well, the Gilgallan plumber, the plumber that comes, his name's Gilgallan, but of course his wife's a Gilgullen, which is really confusing because the Gilgullens live just down the road from me. So really, most of my street is Gilgallen or Gilgullen. How do you think it's not very common? I mean, I'm wondering if I have like, if I should sign up for a long lost family because I don't have a family member that's a plumber or that is your neighbour. <laughs> and that, that, that's, a, that's a good reason why you should do that heritage thing because when I try it, uh, Kiernan comes up with millions of shit you've got to wade through. But if you've got a nice, uh, unusual name like O'Gallon, I think it makes the process a bit easier. Obviously, it's my dad's name, but he doesn't know where it comes from. But uh, we've always wanted to do the My Heritage thing, just to kind of check where we're at. But I met someone when I was in New York, and he asked me what my, what my name was. And I said, I'm Charlotte. And he was like, no, no, your full name. I said, I'm Charlotte Gogallon, and he was like, are you a pirate? Are your family pirate? Mm-hmm. I was like, am I a pirate? No, I don't think so. And he was like, it sounds like a pirate name. And then he just walked away, never spoke to me again. Was, was, was that the time when you hurt your eye and you were wearing the patch? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I had this one uh, I, for months. So you could, you, could see, you could see why. I can see why he thought that, but yeah, he was wrong. Let's have a look. Charlotte, hmm? Charlotte the pirate. Charlotte the pirate. <laughs> What is the dumbest way that you've ever been injured? Oh, I've had plenty of injuries. <laughs> During the fight, we, we were doing, and uh, we were really, really rushing to get the, the day finished, the last day of the whole shoot. It was early on, and the photographer uh, said to me, he said, uh, right, we just want to do some wacky shots for the, for the press release. We were like, oh, because we, you know, we're really going at it. Mm-hmm. So we're doing this. And we want to go and get a beer because we know that you know we're trying to make funny photographs and that. Yeah, and there was this nineteen there was there was this nineteen sixties lamp and he said, Nigel his name was he said, Can you get in, in amongst the lamp and put your arms through the different bits of glass and just make a kind of comedy face? I said, Yeah, okay. Fucking I said, Yeah, okay, so get in. And the, gla- the old 60s lamp, it just cracked and just sliced through my arm. Ow! Ow! It, just, it, was, it was going everywhere. And it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. Because you got a recently, scar. You have a scar there. Uh, that's, I can't remember. It's here, I think. It's there. But anyhow, right. we're saying we want to go for a pint. We want to go for a pint. But because it was the we're making it for the BBC, and oh, they had to take me to the hospital to get a tetanus jag. Because the lamp was a 60s lamp, it'd be full of germs and get a tetanus. <laughs> but, so it's the dumbest thing, you know. But I mean, I've obviously, I 
fell and stuff and done dumb things, but mm -hmm. that's the one that jumps out. Wait. You? For me, gosh, my parents must have like a scroll somewhere with just ways I've been injured. But the most <laughs> recent one last year, it was a really beautiful night during June. Uh, and I really loved sitting outside in my garden at, with the fire pit. Like I really loved just being in the garden and listening to music and having a having a, a Jack Daniels honey whiskey and coke. Like that was my that was my summer drink. I'd said to my sister, "Hey, I'm about to put the fire pit on. Do you want to come downstairs?" And she was on. Oh. She was like, she was, "Oh no, no, this is I'm misleading you here. Nothing to do with fire." Um, but I said, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna chop some wood." to add to the fire because the firewood the log that you have that burns only lasts like an hour so I thought if I chop some more wood from wood we have in the garden it'll last all night and she was like okay I'll be down in like 20 minutes and I had bought my dad an axe for father's day uh I bought him an axe and I thought oh this is a great gift like he's really up in his tool game um I took the axe and I swung it a few times and I chopped wood and I thought oh my god I could be a lumberjack this is great and then I swung it a little too far than my height allows and it swung underneath me and clipped my ankle and I had a it looked like a blowhole on a whale on my ankle. So what's the what's the moral of this story? Don't drink Jack Daniels and use an axe. Or just don't give me an axe. Just just don't give me anything sharp. That's it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I like the Jack Daniels. It sounds like a Jack Daniels poster. I mean it could be. Don't, Think this, don't use an axe. It's nice. I mean, if they want to pay me for promotion, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to do that, I can do that for them. But it was either a toss up between that or when I brushed my teeth with my dad's razor when I was six. Oh. Yeah, well, I thought, well, the, the little, um, you know, blades were like blades. scrapers. So I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just go in with that. And yeah, I had lots yeah. of stitches under my tongue. But my dad has beautiful teeth and I thought, I'm getting my picture taken today. I really want to look good for my photos. So I took his razor and went in about and brushed Ooh. my teeth and went and looked in the mirror and blood all over me and my mom that, threw the phone aside. That, and <laughs> that, well, I had no idea this was coming in. That is going to be the most horrific story that I've heard for a long time. Yay. Jesus. Yay, I wonder. Jesus. That's, like, that's like something in a horror movie. I mean, you've got to look at it from a sexual's perspective. Their dad has beautiful teeth. The mum wants pictures of the kids to look their best, like go brush your teeth and don't leave any plaque. So I thought, right, well, what can I do to make myself look even more amazing with my little kiddie teeth? So I just started brushing my teeth with my dad's razor. What about the, the, the mouthwash? Just, just domestic? It's about domestic, yeah. Sweet bit of yeah. break it, break it up a little bit. Ooh! <laughs> nah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Charlotte. That's something to think about. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's move on to your Scottish knowledge, Ford. What does Dunny Fash mean? Uh, don't, don't concern yourself. Correct. True or false, Scotland's national animal is a unicorn. No, that's false. That's true. What? It's true. Oh, right. And is the next one gullible's in the dictionary? No, oh, seriously. Don't start with this. How can no, that be? Get your phone out right now and Google this. It is true. The national an animal for Scotland is a unicorn. I I promise you, it's true. I know, but you can't, you, you can't just start that nonsense because for a starter, what kind of animal is a unicorn then? It's a horse with a, a horn. It's not a horse. It is. No, but you, you can't call it a horse if you're going to then go in and call it a unicorn. It is the national animal. You don't go, oh, look at, look at that man's nice car boat. It's not a car boat, it's either a car or a boat. I'm, I'm arguing because I don't know the answer. Just wait a minute. How, the, how is this possible? I'm looking it up. Scotland's what? National animal. No, this, this, this happened and I never heard about it. Who's, vo who's voting for this? Me. <laughs> it's, it's got a white horse-like horse -like body. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy with this, but it's, it's true. I'm sorry, I failed. It's true. And it's so true. The integrity and all that, the horns for integrity and purity and all that. I think that's really cool that Scotland's national animal doesn't even as exist. A, it's not real. It's a Disney character. It's a Disney character. 
Right, so Scotland, that, that, that's, that's another great argument for, for Britain, isn't it? That we've got cartoon characters as, as uh, national animal figures. As our national animal. That's great. <laughs> All right, so here's the next one. So Scotland, this is something you might not know, but Scotland is famous. Is this, is this, is this getting to do with unicorns? It doesn't. I can add right, you in Okay, right. So Scotland's, Scotland is famous for having the shortest commercial flight in the world. All right. How long do you think that flight is? Well, it's a it's a commercial flight. I've not been on. So, how long is that commercial flight? You really not know? Nah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to guess and probably say something like four minutes. Okay. So, with favorable wind, the the shortest flight is fifty seven seconds. Uh, from so it comes from we Isles, the Orkney Isles of Westray and Papa Westray. Right, is it, is it busy? Is, is it busy that route? Is it? <laughs> no, I think it it just runs like the local buses, and it just comes around every couple of seconds just to take people over the water that separates them from this little island. But yeah, fifty-seven seconds is the shortest flight in the world, and we're the home of that. Right, is it a meal? You get a meal? I don't think so, but I think if you got on the flight, you'd get one. I think you'd get some kind of champagne as well. But for plebs like me, I'd probably get nothing. So, <laughs> a, a, a one minute flight, you know what I mean? You, you would imagine you'd be able to get a nap, a meal, a very, very short movie. <laughs> I think you'd be quicker swimming across this little bit of water just to get to where you're going rather than get this flight. I couldn't believe that. I came up with these questions with uh, my parents. I was like, right, I need you to think of like questions. And this was just something that came up on facts about Scotland and that we're home to the shortest flight commercially. commercially. And I was like, I need to look into this. But it's true. They've got a whole YouTube video about it somewhere. And for anyone watching, I'll link that down below in case you want to watch it. Um, but it's it's so silly. It's so weird. And how much is it? I don't know. I've never I've never been on it. I didn't actually check that. It must be, it must be, it must be expensive to start up a whole plane. Yeah. You know. like a, it's like a pound a flight, maybe. But probably not. <laughs> Well, anyway, sign me up for it. Right, you go and do that. You go and get that flight. So, oh, that, that sounds like that sounds like a perfect little TV moment. Going up and trying to get a go on that plane. I mean, I should. I would do. I would do a video about that if I could get to Orkney yeah. quite far. Yeah, you should. The shortest flight. Taking the shortest flight. Taking the yeah. in the world. So these last two questions are just you know. It's not like do you know the answer? It's just you know, what's your, what's your view? <laughs> so. What is your favourite thing about Scotland? What's your favourite thing about living here? The people, the foods, the drink? What is it? Well, I would I definitely have to say the people um, because, uh, you know, every, everything that's uh, primarily that I've done in, in television anyhow um, is largely been based on how people speak to one another and, you know, the funny things that they say. Mm -hmm. But I also like um, just the way the Glaswegians are. You, you sometimes, I mean, they're not specific to themselves, Glaswegians or Scottish people. Uh, because when you go to places like Newcastle and uh, Ireland and things, you, you often meet people that are similar to you. You like to talk and like a laugh, like a drink. But um, the, the overall thing about Scotland is, is the warmth that it can have in huge amounts when it wants to. And that you know, it should remember that because it's it's it's, it's a special thing that Scotland's got. You know, um, you know, the, we're warm community people, and he, we should be we should be trying harder to to do that and get the opportunities to do that. Can you wait till this is finished so people can get back talking shite in bus stops again? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think that would be my my answer as well. Is just. The people are just really friendly and really wholesome and welcoming and you know if you you know needed somewhere to stay like someone would help you or if you you know i just think that the i don't know i think just the personality of scottish people is just so it can be loud but it can also be really wholesome and welcoming uh and i have to i have to say that you know 
doing this interview, I've definitely gotten that vibe from yourself, which I mm-hmm. think has been really nice. And I think that for my first go at trying this, it's it's not been awkward. I I was quite nervous going into this, but I just feel like I'm having a, a conversation, which is really lovely. And I think it is because you're from where I'm from. So I think that's really well. Cool. I, I'm not, I'm not so sure. I, I I think if you're naturally Gabby, which you are, eh, you know, there's no reason why you can't have that rapport with everybody. Um, I think it's a good place to start, Scotland, because it's it's in your genetics to want to communicate and survive, and I think that's a great genetic start to have, or or at least it doesn't even need to be genetic. Anybody that's spent 20, 30 years here, um, you'll notice that that accent is imprinted on theirs as well. Mm-hmm. You, sometimes you see somebody on the TV and say, where are they from? And you're like, oh, there's a bit of Scotland in there. And then later on, that's how much of an impression it makes on people. When people come here, they really want to understand what we're talking about. Yeah. What, what, what's that? How is that? What are you saying? You, you guys speak too quickly, but they want to know. They want to know what we're yeah. saying. Yeah. And because that was- they're laughing. Oh, that's the thing. Well, that was something else as well, because I thought I can just kind of speak normally, like at my normal pace, because when I'm speaking to people that are from anywhere else that's not here, or even mm. people down in England, I have to really slow down how I speak mm. so that they understand. But with you, I can just kind of speak normally, which is nice. So thanks for that. <laughs> I, I, I've, always, I've always struggled with my idea of what my accent is. Uh, not, but nothing to do with class or anything, but simply to do with, I'm comfortable speaking the way that I do. I speak quickly, I speak uh, strong glass region. I've got a deep voice, which doesn't help the resonance of it or getting it across properly. Mm-hmm. But I'll be buggered if I'm changing it now. I, I'm, I'm 58. I have modified it, mm-hmm. and, you know, and I've done things where I've had to use other accents. <laughs> but I'm proud of my glass region accent. and. Uh, I'm there's been a lot of good, yeah. There's been a lot of good uh, advocates for our accent, like Conley and Craig Ferguson, and um, you know, there's been a lot of people. I mean, Craig Ferguson's a good example because like, he he's still got a good, strong uh, Scottish accent, and he's right there in the middle of American TV, brilliant because he's doing it for the team. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I so, so over there, he's you know helping us to be more understood. <laughs> the other thing is. I've spoken to other glass regions that can't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, you're joking. Really? Well, just, just speaking too quickly. Just you know, and, and yeah, because you know, if your mind's running quickly, glass regions are a perfect way to have your say what's on your mind as soon as it comes into your mind. You well, know? I think that that's a really great way to end my little questionnaire. I think just kind of being proud of who you are and how you speak. I think that's important for everybody who watches this to take heart from so thank you for saying what you said and doing that um is there do you want to plug anything while you're here do you want to let viewers know where they can find you on social media or if you've got anything coming up that you might want to let people know about no i have absolutely nothing to plug (laughs) but um only to say that a this sort of thing that you're doing and all the, 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 the things you're thinking about doing, you keep, you keep pursuing it, and, 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 and that's the way forward. The BBC and ITV and all these companies really need to take notice of the fact that television's changed completely. The future's for the young people in this business, not us old fogies. We've had a run. You know, if we pick up jobs here and there as, they, as we go on, that's fine. This next period, it's up to the TV companies and the internet media companies to take you by the hand and, and help you through this next bit. Keep keep the courage, keep the faith, because it'll work. Oh, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, I'll just say my wee out. What's up with you? What's up with me? Hi. I think that last question was just really wholesome, and I'm just really feeling the oh. impact of what you said. Oh. <laughs> That's too nice. Uh, okay, guys, so that was my interview with uh, Ford Kiernan, also known as many other things, but to me, Jack Jarvis Esquire at, uh, what is it, Osprey Heights? Is that where you're? Osprey Heights. <laughs> Osprey Heights, got it. Not again. 
Start again. Oh, you might as well. Let's oh. That'd be cool. Okay. So thank you so much, guys, for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, guys, for this. <laughs> there you go. Go, go, go. I'm too afraid to say anything now. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm, I, look, I'm here to help. Off you go, and I'll just sit here and say nothing. okay so thanks for watching guys if you're interested in seeing more content like this please comment down below if you know anybody that might be interested in doing videos like this and you know them please let them know i'm looking for guests always to do interviews like this i have more 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 questions but ford and i are both super chatty and we both like to gab a lot about the one question i had about 20 i think i asked about seven so please don't forget to like and subscribe and if you haven't watched any of ford's shows please please go and watch them they will make you laugh they will make you cry they will make you happy just go and give them a go and uh, thank you so much, Ford, for being here today. I really appreciate you giving up your time to do this. I'm not giving my time up. I had a great time doing it because you're dragging me into the future too. With What with the Zooms and the Facebook, Twitters and all that, it's marvellous. <laughs> I, I, I really had a nice time. There you go, guys. You heard it here first. Ford Kiernan himself had a really nice time on this chat. Really so. nice. <laughs> I had a really nice time. I can't say, I mean, you know, what? it's not changed my life. But I can only say I've had a nice time. Do you want me to say I've had a super nice time? A fantastic time? If you don't like, look, that's what it is. I've had a nice time and there's nothing else I can say about it. I'm trying my best here. And with that, I will turn off this camera and see you guys in my next video. <laughs> Bye.